words, English words, were full of echoes, memories, associations. They are the wildest, freest, most irresponsible, most unteachable of all things. You can catch them and sort them and place them in alphabetical order, in dictionaries. But words do not live in dictionaries. They live in the mind. If you want proof of this, consider how often, in moments of emotion, when we most need words, we find none. Yet there is a dictionary. There are at our disposal of some half million words, all in alphabetical order. But can we use them? No, because words do not live in dictionaries, they live in the mind. All we can say about them as we peer at them over the edge of that deep, dark and only fitfully illuminated cavern in which they live, the mind, all we can say about them is that they seem to like people to think before they use them and to feel before they use them. But to think and to feel not about them, about something different. Perhaps that is our most striking peculiarity, their need of change. It is because the truth they try to catch is many-sided, and they convey it by being many-sided, flashing first this way, then that. Thus they mean one thing to one person, another thing to another person. And it is because of this complexity, this power to mean different things to different people, that they survive. How can we combine the old words in new orders, so that they survive, so that they create beauty, so that they tell the truth. That is the question. <laughs>